Welcome to April's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is find first and last position of element in sorted array. Given an array of integers, nums, sorted in ascending order, find the starting and ending position of a given target value. If target is not found in the array, return negative 1, negative 1. So we have a sorted array here with numbers, possibly repeats, and we want to find the first position where some number appears, as well as the last position. So here with the target of 8, we see that the first index number that appears is 3, and the last one is going to be a 4. So this would be really easy if we could just do it in all of n time. We can just iterate down every single number, first forwards, and find the first index number that the target appears, and then move backwards and find the last position that the target first appears, and just return that. If we don't find it, we can just return negative 1. Uh, but there's a follow-up. Could you write an algorithm in log n runtime complexity? So as, you, as soon as you see that, you realize, okay, they want us to do a binary search because this is sorted. We're going to take advantage of that and do a binary search to find the first and last t uh, index number where the number appears. But that's the tricky part. How do we find the last position and the first position that this index number appears? Uh, so let's begin by first initializing our n to equal the length of nums. And we'll first initialize the start n to be negative 1, negative 1 at first. So right here, we already know we're going to do a binary search, but we want to find the leftmost point uh, when this number appears, right? Uh, so to do that, we'll first initialize lnr to equal 0 and n. And we'll say while l is less than r, what we're going to do first, we're going to calculate the midpoint between these two. And normally, we'll say something like if you know nums mid equals our target, uh, break the loop, right? But we can't do that here. Uh, because we want to find that very leftmost. Uh, so what we'll do is um, push back this r as far as possible. Um, so what we'll do is say, if this is greater or equal to the target, we are going to um, set our r to mid. Otherwise, we are going to increase our l to equal mid plus one. Now what, what's this doing? Uh, essentially, uh, we'll, we'll always be decreasing this right pointer all the way to the point where uh, L and R are equal to one another. And because we continue to make L plus one, at the very end, this L right here should indicate to us the first time the number appears. Now it is possible this L is going to fall out of bounds to equal N. So we'll have to check for that as well. We'll say if L is less than n and um, this nums l is equal to target then we're going to update our start to equal l now otherwise if we haven't found it then it's going to remain negative one All right now so now we want to do a binary search to the rightmost side All right so we'll re reinitialize our lnr to be zero and n Say while l is equal to r, uh, we'll do the same thing, but in our first condition, we're going to change it up a little bit. We'll say if nums dot mid is less than or equal to target, we are going to update our l to equal mid plus one. Same thing, else r equals mid. And this will give us the rightmost point. Um, but recall that r can also equal n. So this actually is going to give us the next position when the target is, has switched. And it could be out of bounds. Or it could be? No, no. It can't. Because um, it could be. But all we, all we have to do then is to say r minus 1 for that. So. Uh, we don't need to have, uh, we don't need to check if the length is less than n. We can just say if nums r minus 1 equals target, okay, then the end is equal to r minus 1. Okay, and that just, that just took me a, a little bit of time to figure out after some, um, you know, playing around with. Uh, all we need to do now is return the start and end points. And that should be it. Let's see if this works. 
Okay, looks like it's working. Ah, whoops, I forgot an edge case here. Yep. Um, forgot that if it's an empty nums, if not nums, uh, this algorithm won't work. So we'll just have to say return negative one, negative one here. And there we go. Time complexity wise, it's going to be log of n. Because even though we do it twice, that's still considered log of n. Now, just, um, just for thoroughness, I realized that you could cheat and you don't even need to write this algorithm here. What you could do is just use the bisect left and bisect right uh, function in Python. You say bisect left, say pass in nums and target. Uh, we can say well, it's going to be the left and this would be the right. And we would still need to have um, some if statements here for the L. Say if equals L. But make sure this L is also inbounds. L is less than N. N. Okay, so this should work as well. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this works. It's doing the exact same thing, but now we're just calling a function to kind of take care of that for us. Um, so it's good to know this sometimes comes up, bisect left, bisect right, so definitely good to know this. Okay, other than that, I think this is it. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.